Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Blake Horridge. I'm the associate registrar here at CMC. Uh, I just started a, about a year and a half ago, so chances are if you're an alum from longer than that, you don't know who I am. I'm not Elizabeth Morgan. That's probably the most important piece of information when you <laughs> think my hair is not nearly as nice. Um, today I'm going to talk about two things that I'm really passionate about. Uh, liberal arts and the zombie apocalypse. Now, if you were living under a rock, you wouldn't know that zombies are the in thing these days. Uh, zombies have taken over popular culture in many different ways. There's literature, like World War Z by Max Brooks, which is a great book, okay movie. Um, the Walking Dead, popular show on AMC, uh, now into its uh, fourth season now, so this is very exciting. Plants vs. Zombies. Zombies have invaded your cell phones. Millions of people have downloaded games like this on their cell phones, and there's countless others. If you go to the, the App Store or whatever and search zombies, you'll come up with tons of games and apps and things. There's even real-life experiences. This is a zombie walk in Boston. People dress up like zombies just to kind of walk, hang out, be zombies together. It's, people are, are really taking the part of this culture. So, I love zombies, and there's something else that I know a lot about. This, <laughs> the CMC curriculum. Now, if you're seniors, you know this very well because you know what you've got left. If you're freshmen, maybe you're still learning about it. But as you can see, we cover a lot at CMC, and that's on purpose. We are a liberal arts college, that's our big thing. So math, science, foreign language, social sciences, humanities, and even physical education. Now. I thought about this for today's talk and thought to myself, okay, what can I contribute to this discussion about the liberal arts in action? And what I've come to the conclusion is that CMC is preparing you for the zombie apocalypse, whether you know it or not. I'm gonna break it up into three different categories. First, when zombies come calling. How does CMC prepare you for the beginning of the zombie apocalypse, when they're starting to take over the world? Now, much to the chagrin of some of our students, math and science will both be crucial for the beginning of the zombie apocalypse. Uh, in pretty much all modern tellings of how zombies come about, there is a naturalistic cause. In George Romero's Night of the Living Dead, it was, a, it was gas from Venus that was raising the dead. In more modern takes, it's usually a virus or something like that that's turning people either into zombies or back into zombies when they've died. In either case, you have to have some understanding of science and the math that goes along with that in order to tackle the zombie menace. Psychology. Psychology is important in two ways. First, zombies were once human. That's the point of them being zombies. And we understand that there's probably some level of human brain function there. Having an understanding of how people work in that respect will help us understand zombies better and how we can defeat them. In addition, zombie apocalypses are very stressful. Um, psychology helps us understand what do people do in these situations? How can we handle someone who is freaking out because their loved one has just come back from the dead? It's a justifiable stressor, but dealing with that is a key thing. And last, physical education. Anyone who's seen Zombieland, rule number one in surviving Zombieland is cardio. We're not just making you get out of bed and do some things. We are making sure you don't die in the first days of the zombie apocalypse. So take those PE classes as much as you can so you are prepared. Now, once zombies have been around for a while, the question is not just how do we survive the zombie apocalypse, but how do we keep society going? How do we rebuild? And there's a few different ways we do that. First, history. A zombie apocalypse would not be the first time in human history that we've dealt with some sort of cataclysmic event. Diseases have struck, major wars have happened, people have recovered. Knowing what's happened before and how humanity has dealt with it actually aids us moving forward. Economics. Okay. Um, there probably isn't going to be a market economy after the zombies. I'm just going to say that. Um, but there's still going to be supply and demand. There's still going to be allocation of resources and how you manage assets. It may be bullets instead of dollars, but it's still going to be something that you're going to have to manage and understand. 
So economics is still going to have a place in helping society move on. Government's the same way. It may be a very different structure we have, but no matter what happens, people are going to need to live together and know how to work as a society together. Understanding the various kinds of governments that have existed and what might be the best for their particular scenario is going to be key as humanity tries to rebuild. Foreign language. The world will become much smaller after the zombies. And let's say you're here in LA when it happens. Just go down the street and you'll have people speaking Spanish, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, a whole plethora of different languages. If you only know one, you are putting yourself at a disadvantage. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> this is why we care that you know something else, so you can actually encounter the rest of the world and work with them. And finally, the big questions. Literature and foreign literature, at their core, are about stories. They provide a way for people to tell about an experience, about an idea that they have. And that's going to be crucial post-zombies. Whether it's telling the story of humanity after it's happened, or reminding us of what can be in the world, even that's got screwed up by zombies. Literature serves as that focus point where we can go and try to know the world a little bit better. Philosophy. Zombies bring up a lot of great questions, mostly about what does it mean to be human? Zombies have come back from the dead, but do we still, do they have the same ethical status? How do we deal with that? What if zombies start having some human characteristics, but not others? Do they have a different class? Philosophy is also going to be important when we're dealing with the zombie plague. And religious studies. Resurrection and rebirth are important themes in many of religion. How do we deal with that now that things have come back from the dead? Do we have to reshape our religious view of the world? How does various churches and faiths going to look when this happens? Knowing something about that now will help you moving forward. Now that's all well and good, but you could be saying, well, okay, I'm going to be, I'm a science major, and why do I have to do anything else? I can just do the sciencey stuff when the zombie apocalypse comes. There's a lot of reasons why the liberal arts in particular give you an advantage. Now, I've put up a little thing there of humans versus zombies in Claremont, which is a, a game that happens, I think, once a year around the five Cs. And it's no surprise that Max, uh, Max Brooks in his book, World War Z, talks about the five Cs being one of the last bastions to defend themselves against the zombie apocalypse, specifically the five Cs. And they're ones later on, years after everyone else has been kind of taken on, the government comes back and tries to help. The five C's have hold down the fort. And this is why I think why. First, adaptability. We don't know how many scientists are going to be alive when the zombies are done. We don't know how many poets. We don't know how many musicians or economists or lawyers or politicians. Being able to adapt, being able to serve more than one kind of role is going to be crucial. If all we have is a bunch of economists after the zombie apocalypse, things are not going to be great when you're trying to cure diseases or write poems. Holistic thinking. The world now and the world after zombies are going to be full of complicated problems. Being able to look at them from multiple perspectives is going to be crucial to solving those problems. Being able to take more than just one view will allow people to survive where others fail. And last, retaining culture. It's one thing to survive the zombie apocalypse. There are people who are survivalists that can do this, who go down their bunker and be fine for a couple years. It's a very different thing to thrive after the zombie apocalypse. And this is where the liberal arts gives you an edge. You can help retain the things of culture that we appreciate more than just surviving day to day. Bringing back government and arts and all the things that we appreciate as a culture. The liberal arts set you up to appreciate those things and help bring them back. Now you may be saying zombies aren't real. I would say, not yet. But, <laughs> even if the zombie apocalypse never happens, that's just one of many apocalypses that could happen. We have set up a lot of man-made ways to destroy the world. Whether it's through nukes, biological or chemical warfare, there are a lot of different things that can really throw off all of humanity if used in the wrong ways. All these things can bring about the end of the world. 
and even if humans weren't involved. You've got things like supervolcanoes. There's one under Yellowstone. That if explodes will basically put us into another ice age. Or meteors. We could go the way of the dinosaurs. There are a lot of things that can happen that can throw off the world as we know it that still require us to be able to act in good ways. This is my last point. When the zombies come, this is going to be your biggest weapon. And so what I tell you is, while you're here at a liberal arts school or remembering back to the, what you experienced at CMC, remember that you can either use it or lose it. There is a zombie happy to take your brain for you if you do not want it yourself. Thank you.